Hello everyone and welcome to this blissful yin yoga practice. In this video, I'll guide you through a full body yin yoga session of relaxing postures that is specifically designed to be super stretchy and satisfying. Welcome back to Debbie Daily Yoga and welcome back to the yin yoga challenge where we're on day number 12. You won't need any props today, just go ahead and roll out your mat and we'll begin our yin yoga practice right now. We'll begin this practice in child's pose. So climb onto hands and knees and settle your hips back toward your heels, letting your knees be as wide as you'd like for them to be so that your body can be super comfortable here. And you can rest your forehead down, rest your palms on the ground and allow the tops of the feet to rest into the floor, the knees and shins supported. And can you take your next breath in through the nostrils and pull it down all the way to the low belly. And exhale from the low belly out through the nose. And your next breath in through the nose and let it spread into the back body, lower back, upper back. Exhale and soften and sink into the ground. And now let's come up to hands and knees. Make our way into your choice of deer or sleeping swan with the left knee forward. For deer, you'll turn your shin so that it comes somewhat in line with the front short edge of your mat. The back leg can come to whatever degree of bend feels right for you to kind of just sit comfortably here. And then we come down over the leg, maybe angling toward the knee maybe angling more toward the right over the shin or even toward the foot. And we wanna find a stretch in the left glutes, left buttock, and you might prefer a sleeping swan pose, simply extending the right leg back behind you and squaring the hips a little more over the leg. So find your choice of glute stretch. Perhaps you're resting on the elbows, perhaps resting the forehead on the hands, or forehead on the floor. And now we can begin to settle into the stillness of yin, letting the body yield to the position so that the connective tissues and fascia can slowly release their tension Slow, steady breathing. And now slowly come up. And we're going to transition into half saddle from here. So we'll take this knee, that the right knee, and bend it toward the front more if it's not already there. And then we can keep this left foot here to begin with and start to settle back onto the hands or onto the elbows, or maybe all the way back onto a bolster or blocks or the floor. Decide where you feel the best to create a stretch in the front of your right thigh and the front of your right shin.
And you can fine tune this by adjusting what your left knee is doing, bringing the knee up to the sky or extending this left leg forward onto the mat or hugging the knee in toward the chest. Now, one of the things people wonder about a lot is if it's bad for the knee to come off the floor. And you can see mine comes off the floor a bit. It's not bad at all, as long as your foot feels okay, because that's what could get uncomfortable here. As long as your knee doesn't hurt, and as long as you're feeling the stretch in the target area, which is the front of the right thigh and the front of the right hip. And once you are there, in your variation of the pose with whatever props or support you need, then let yourself soften and relax. And slowly now release the pulse, coming back up the way you came in or rolling to the side to come out of it. And we'll change the legs to come into deer pose or sleeping swan on the second side. So right shin parallel with the top of your mat and the left leg back behind you at an angle. Or if you're moving towards sleeping swan, you may not want to do parallel with this front leg, but instead keep the foot in more. And whichever version you're in, you're hinging forward at the hips, supporting yourself on your hands, on your elbows, maybe resting the forehead down, maybe propping something under the right hip. Settle now into steady and slow breathing. Slowly rise up and shift into position for half saddle. Left knee comes toward the front, right foot comes to the left knee, 
and settle back onto your elbows or stay up on straight arms or prop yourself up with as much cushioning as you need. Finding and feeling a stretch in the front of the left thigh and the front of the left hip. And as we begin to soften into this and get beyond the front body tension, we can begin to feel a back bend, a lower back sensation, a sacrum. And this is where the pose starts to really get good. And let's take a breath in now. And exhale. Slowly release and make your way to a position on your back to rest. You can just untuck the leg or roll to one side and rest on the back as you feel the effects of these two postures we've done in a row, the deer or sleeping swan and half saddle. Might feel energy flowing through your outer hips or through the front of your hips and thighs or anywhere else throughout the legs and pelvis. And now bend your knees, hug them into your chest and gently rock side to side. And now let's extend the left leg forward and take the right knee across the body, moving toward our one-legged twist. And today we'll add the option to move into cat's tail pose. So we extend the right arm out to the side if we're staying in the one-legged twist, and this can be our pose. Or if we want to take it into cat's tail, we bring this right knee toward the floor and really try and point the navel toward the ground. So we're more in a facing down position with the torso. Here we can easily, more easily I should say, bend the left knee up and hold it with the right hand. And now we can begin to settle back settling the right shoulder back, resting the head on the floor. And if you find that part difficult, you could use a block under your head or a cushion or a folded blanket like I have. And this left hand can come onto the knee. You could use a bolster or other support under your right knee and foot. Cat's tail pose is one of our more intense poses, a little more um, involved than some of the other yin poses because we're stretching multiple parts of the body. It's a twist as well as a back bend. And we warmed up this back bend range of motion with our half saddle pose.
begin to settle into a soft and easy place and remembering if it's too intense you can move into that one-legged twist instead because this pose is not for everyone and any pose in yin if we find ourselves struggling with it then it's probably not worth it it's not again it's not about achieving poses it's about stimulating energy, moving energy, and if we're struggling with a pose, we're really not doing that. Whichever pose you're in, we find a deep breath in, and exhale. Slowly release both legs, bring yourself back to the center and pause at the center with your feet on the floor, knees bent. Let your knees fall in against one another, your feet wider than hips and hands to the low belly. Take a moment to feel what's happening in your body. Feel the difference between right and left sides. And now let's change to the other side. We'll extend the right leg forward, bend the left knee and cross it over and bring the knee all the way to the floor and get that same orientation where the belly is pointed more toward the floor to bend the right foot up, reach back with your left hand and open it back. making whatever adjustments you need to find a comfortable place to rest here in your cat's tail pose. And find your steady breath. Slowly release now, and once again, roll back to the center. Let the feet plant down and plant them as wide as your mat. So take them a little wider, open the arms out, and let's take some windshield wipers to the right 
and then up and over to the left. A couple more times each side. It can feel nice to let the head go the opposite way of the knees for a little added twist. And we're gonna bring it back to the center now. And we'll slowly roll to the side now to come up for a choice of forward bend, a symmetrical forward bend to end our practice with. And it could be caterpillar or snail. So here's caterpillar, folding forward over the legs with whatever props you'd like under your seat or under your head or under your chest. And for a little more intensity, we will have the option to do snail pose today. And you don't need to use blankets for snail, but I am using blankets these days, so I'll show you my blanket setup. The blankets, we want to create a nice clean edge for the shoulders to rest on. It needs to be wide enough for the shoulders, and the head comes right off the edge. And you'll use as many blankets as you need. It'll be easier the more blankets you use. And we send the legs up and over with the head hanging off of the edge of the blankets. And the hands could stay here at the lower back. Or the hands could come up above the head and rest on the floor or hold on to the toes. And whether you're in caterpillar or snail, we have this full back body stretch happening throughout the back of the spine, the back of the neck, and the backs of the legs. Slowly release the pose, whichever one you're in, and find your way into your choice of Shavasana on the back, or join me in a seated position for a final meditation. Whether you're lying down or sitting, allow the eyes to gently close. Make sure you have as much prop support as you need. And now we can inhale a gentle breath. Let it go. And feel the energy swirling inside of the body. After doing a couple of quite strong powerful poses in this practice, there could be quite a bit of energy moving through. And as you rest with these energies, listen to the words of Sutra number 16 from the Radiant Sutras, which is one of my very favorites. The roar of joy that set the worlds in motion is reverberating in your body and the space between all bodies. Beloved, listen. Find that exuberant vibration rising new in every moment, 
humming in your secret places, resounding through the channels of delight. Know you are flooded by it always. Float with the sound. Melt with it into divine silence. The sacred power of space will carry you into the dancing, radiant emptiness that is the source of all. The ocean of sound is inviting you into its spacious embrace calling you home, calling you home. End of Sutra. Breathe a gentle breath in and exhale. Sensing what's resounding within you. Bring our palms together in front of the heart now and chant the sound of Om three times. Inhale. With that, we'll close today's session. Namaste. I hope you feel amazingly peaceful and satisfied after this practice. If you feel you need to rest in stillness and quiet for a little longer, you might pause the video at this point. I want to thank you for practicing with Devi Daily Yoga. Be sure to move slowly and gently into the next part of your day. And if you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel where I have over 200 yin yoga videos organized into helpful playlists. If you're serious about deepening your knowledge of yin yoga, you might check out my online yin yoga teacher certification program. I also have a yoga membership site where my community of yogis follows a weekly calendar with me. And you can find links to these things in the description box below. This class has been part of the 30-day yin yoga challenge. And if you haven't signed up for the challenge, you can sign up at challenge.devidaily.com. Starting on the day you sign up, you'll get daily emails with a direct link to the video of the day to help keep you on track with the program. And you'll also immediately receive a calendar along with a PDF guide for the program and a posture gallery. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and until then, I hope the rest of your day flows beautifully.